hey, hey, Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, oracle card advisor, paranormal investigator, voice for your loved ones. So, I don't know if I've read for you before, so I'm just going to give a little speech. I see, hear, feel, sense, know. They talk to me, but they also show me pictures, and I call it spiritual charades. So, I describe the picture the best that I can. They do not give me every detail because that's none of my business. They'll give me just enough so you understand what they're talking about. They uh, they tell us what we need to know, not always what we want to know. So they it's their show. I, I let them do whatever they feel like they need to do. But this is not an exact science, so you got to stretch it outside the box sometimes a little bit. We communicate the best we, best way we can. So we're going to talk to Eric today, and uh, he's he's already come in here bouncing around. Well, I shouldn't say, he says, don't say bouncing, I don't bounce. <laughs> well, he comes in kind of sauntering in. He goes, hey girl, and then he goes, and kind of shakes his head like this, like, hey, girl, what you up to? I don't know if I should say this. He says, I know what you're up to. I can see you. <laughs> Even when you're taking a shower. I don't know if I should have said that, but it's, I always regret later if I don't say something, and then I find out later, oh man, I should have said that, <laughs> but I can't prove it now that it happened. Anyway, <laughs> I give whatever they say as long as they're on the up and up. Anyway, oh, he's laughing hysterically. He says, you're going to find that extreme. <laughs> He's showing you now with a towel over you like, I'm not getting in the shower now. <laughs> oh. He says, I still love you this much. And he's, he's saying it in a funny way, not like he's being sarcastic or anything. He says, I know. <laughs> He's, he's got this, um, I don't want his energy is like, it's like comical, but kind of low-keyed comical. Not, not even on the sarcastic level yet, anyway. Kind of laid back. He says, I know I didn't put my best foot forward, and he's still being a little funny, but a little serious about it. When I was with you. He said he was always looking up. What is he looking at? He's going to show me. It's all up to him. He's got a, he's got a long rifle or shotgun in his hands. But he's pointing it up, like at the sun. Like he was always shooting, shooting for the sun, shooting, shooting for something else. But, but he couldn't see what it was. He couldn't, um, and it's not like he's confused or anything about it. It was like he always wanted to shoot for something higher up there. But now he's showing a house up there. It looks kind of like a mansion. Um, fancy car. These are the things he wanted to shoot for, but he's like, nah. So what? Who needs that? That's what he wanted to shoot for. I don't. You have to tell me. He would like to have been shooting for those types of things like everybody else, 
but he really wasn't super ambitious about it. Um, if that's is that the word you want to use? He, he repeats ambitious. Just wasn't real kind of laid back. Like I'm okay with what I have, but I would really like to have that anyway. He says he would like to have given that to you because he thought that's what you wanted. He says it wasn't in his demeanor. That he was happy and relaxed with what he had. And he's doing... I didn't need all that fancy stuff. I hear him say hair of the dog. And I and I don't usually say it in readings because I hear it a lot. I don't know why that is one of the things that I hear repeatedly. And I just don't usually say it because it's I hear it too many times. He's showing a skateboard out on the sidewalk and he falls off of it. And he's showing himself like the age of the picture that I got of him. So, uh oh, was there beer involved and he tried to get on a skateboard and fell off as an adult? Don't spill the beer. He's showing himself on the ground now, holding what looks like a beer up in the air, like, score, I didn't spill it. Wait a minute, I can't, <laughs> I can't. wait a minute, he's trying to say something, but he's kind of, no, eh, no, I didn't catch all the words. You're cuter than a, <laughs> cuter than a tick on a coon hound. <laughs> he's trying to be funny and lighthearted. I don't know if he's just gonna if he's gonna get serious or not. <laughs> Now he's playing what looks like a banjo. He's talking about deliverance <laughs> and playing banjo music. <laughs> he's quite the character. I need to laugh this morning. Been quarantined too long. He says every time you sneeze, you freak out. Every time you sneeze, it pops into your head. Do I have the virus? He says, he says, chill. Chill out, calm down. It's all in God's plan. Everything will be all right. Now he's, he puts his hand on top of a little boy's head, and I'm going to say, I suck at guessing ages. I'm going to say the boy is seven-ish. Don't hold me to that seven number. But he's standing there, and he puts, and the boy has dark hair. Nice-looking young man. He puts his hand on top of his head. He looks up at him. So whoever this boy is, he sees him. He knows small children and animals, at least dogs and cats. I'm not sure about the other animals because it seems like it's always a dog and a cat. They see them. They hear them. They interact with them. 
and usually children about nine or ten, then they start going. Heidi's going to call me crazy if I tell them I have an imaginary friend, and they kind of start shutting it down, or at least shutting up about it, closing it in. So this one, this one sees him and interacts with him because he's he's showing the little boy looking up at him like no big deal. And he's calling him uncle. He's calling Eric uncle. Now, when I when I say somebody's an uncle, I always say uncle type figure because even if Eric is not a blood uncle, he could feel like an uncle, a blood uncle would. Oh, am I missing? I always say. The older lady next door can feel more like a grandmother type figure to you than your actual grandmother who lives clear across the country, if that makes any sense. So it doesn't have to be blood, but it's that type of energy feeling. Anyway, and he feels Eric put his hand on his head. I mean, he, can, he feels that, but he knows he's there and it's no big deal. He said he's not scared of him because Eric goes in and they play and he's showing, I don't know if the boy's big enough to be playing um, Xbox or whatever, but he's showing that the little boy sits there and plays some kind of electronic game and Eric sits there and watches him in. He goes, get that guy over there. No, you're going to miss that one. Hurry up. Do that. You're going to die on the game. So they play together. So Eric says, you guys were not meant to be. It was a lesson. He says for both, more for you. So what did you learn from your relationship with Eric? What, I mean, really, really look deep down at it because people come into our lives to teach us things. We're here to learn lessons. That's why we come to this big ball in the sky to learn things. So he says to love more and love deeper, you're supposed to learn to have learned from having a relationship with him that you can't make us <laughs> you can't make a, a square peg fit in a round hole so i don't know if maybe you tried to make him into this person that would be comfortable living in this mansion or you know something like that he didn't go that far with it but he said i was just going to be I was always going to be one of them people that would just uh, suck on a toothpick. He's even showing making that, that sucking noise, like when you suck on your suck on a toothpick or suck on your teeth or something along that line. He said, "I was just always going to be that kind of guy," and that's not what you needed. That there was something from him that you needed. And he says, honestly, go back and look at some of the relationships you've had through your life. And not just boy-girl relationships. He's talking about, like, he's showing like when you were little, went on up. What did you learn from each one of those people? Did you learn how to love more? Did you learn how to forgive? Did you learn how to... He says, so now when you look at somebody and they're getting on your nerves, he says, what can you learn from that? Instead of hating them, what can you learn from that? So love them anyway, but distance yourself. 
Uh, he's trying to open your eyes to some. <laughs> Back to you standing there with a the robe. <laughs> and he starts laughing. Because he knows he's going to have you paranoid now. <laughs> I promise you a thousand percent they can hear you, they can see you <laughs> telling telling the bathroom's off limits. Be very stern about it. <laughs> I think he's just being silly about it, but what if they see I mean <laughs> eh, there's times when I'm laying in the bathtub and I look up and I go, Okay, why are you in my bathroom and what do you want? <laughs> Sometimes they pop in when I'm relaxed. Okay, I don't, I don't know why he's doing this. He's showing me. I'm assuming these are your feet. There's black, like slick, shiny, patent leather type looking shoes on with white socks. Good God, that's something we wore way back, way back in the day. And he's talking about ruby red slippers. But all I'm seeing is like, not even up to the knee. I'm just, but I feel like these are your feet. He's talking about ruby red slippers, which is Wizard of Oz, Dorothy, clicking her heels together. I live in Kansas. I don't know. I have no clue where you live. So I don't, I don't think it has anything to do with the name Dorothy. He's not explaining why he's showing this. And I, well, then I see a little handbag, like somebody's holding a handbag, but I can't see that high up. So I, there's always a reason. They never waste their energy. They don't waste a message. There's always a reason for what they show. It's just like a little handbag with a handle, just like a little smaller than that. And it's making me think of the Wizard of Dorothy. I don't even know if she had a purse in the Wizard of Oz. She had a of Toto in it. I don't know what he means by it. Because sometimes when you got to stretch it outside the box a little bit, to get a little cryptic. He's not saying anything. Okay, he came over and he walked behind me and he's standing there. And I don't even feel him pushing on me. Usually when their energy gets that close, my head starts itching and I can feel them push on me. But I don't feel that, but I can feel the presence and his, and his energy is like growing, growing. His presence is getting very large and he's right behind me. And it's like he's making his, his presence larger and larger, but he's not touching me. So sometimes you're going to feel like somebody's behind you and you turn around and there's nobody there. So when that happens, just tell her I still love her. Now he's being more serious. And I'm sorry for being an ass. A sloppy ass. I am sorry, don't forget that I do love you in my own way. So anyway, I was I was gonna say I walked up to a bar one time and felt somebody standing right here and I turned around, there's nobody there. And this is when I kind of first started this. And to my right, a girl came up immediately at the same time and ordered two blue moon beers. Well, that proved to me that that was Bob because Blue Moon is a very big sign for us. So when you think you feel somebody behind you and, you, and there's nobody there, and it's not creepy, it's it's just look around, listen to the TV, the radio, whatever, whatever's going on, whatever's on Facebook at that time, do you see something that would validate him? Could be his name, could be something about him, could be a guy that looks like him, um, anything, anything that would validate a vehicle like his, anything that would make you immediately think of him. Usually there's a double, there's a validation with it.
He says you'll smell him too. Whatever whatever it was he wore on his hair, or cologne, or whatever, you'll you should smell that too. And usually it's just a little whiff that goes by, and you can be anywhere. It's still feeling back there. Um, in your car, outside, in your house, Walmart, doesn't matter. Get that little whiff. He said he doesn't bother you too much. He doesn't really go clanking around your house or anything because he says that's not my place. But he does keep his eye on you out of love and respect and goodness and admiration. He just spit the words out. And fun. <laughs> Everything will be all right. It happened like it's supposed to. And now he's kind of singing. It was my time. There's, I don't think there's a song like that. It was just my time. You don't want me to sing. <laughs> He'll delete the video if you hear me sing. But he's kind of sing song in it with a big smile on his face. He says, I can eat any damn thing I want to now, don't have to worry about this. He says he was fun and lighthearted, but a lot of that was kind of a show because he's showing that deep, really super deep down inside. He had things hidden that were serious that bit on him that he tried to hide and cover up and he didn't want people to know about that just really, if he had dug into it, it would have brought him to his knees with too many tears. He tried to ignore it, and that never works because just, I'm going to say five years ago, they forced me to bring some of that stuff out of my childhood. You think it's gone? It's not. Um, he started to say something, then he quit. So, if you do want more signs from him, tell him. Tell him it's okay. I, I think he's thinking it's not it's not his place to butt in. It's not his place to have his energy around, or at least to make his presence known. Tell him it's okay. That's what you want. Allow him. He likes it when you smile. He said he always did. It always made his heart flutter. So cool. And I still love you. One of those things. He's kind of nonchalant when he said that. Kind of like accepting it, but kind of like sad about it. I wasn't the right fit for what you need on your path in life. So it's okay. So smile a little smile for me, Rosemary, hang on, this is an old song, they always pick old songs that I know, but I don't even know how old you are, so I don't know, if you, let me see if I can find it, 
Okay, so I had A-L-E-X-A. -E I hope she never learns how to spell her name. Play this song. It's called Smile a Little Smile for Me by the Flying Machine. This is way back, way back. So Google that song or play it on YouTube or whatever. And as I played it to make sure it was the right song, so I had the right name, title, and artist, my whole body had goosebumps, just tingle, tingle, so I know it's the right song. So uh, he's sending that to you. Don't forget you can count on me, even though you couldn't count on me when I was here. So anything that he was good at, I always tell the, tell the saying, Uncle Joe didn't have a pot to piss in. Don't ask Uncle Joe once he's gone for financial advice, because he's we're not all knowing and geniuses once we get there. So pick something that Eric was good at. What was what was Eric? What was his best qualities? And when you need help with something like that, ask him. And I mean really ask him, but and then you have to allow for whatever. They can open doors, they can bring people to you, they can nudge people that you need for that, in, that part in your life. So, am I muttering? <laughs> so, ask him for whatever he was good at. He would be, he says, over the top happy to help you with it. And you'll be surprised, like all of a sudden your phone will ring and it'll be somebody connected with whatever you need to ask him to do. But you also have to allow it. If you ask, you have to allow. And people tend to ask and then block it and don't realize they block it. I do it all the time and I know better. So, okay, he's, he's always got him a big bag of popcorn, then he went to a big bowl of popcorn. Throwing it up, catching it in his mouth. <laughs> I can be lazy as fuck. <laughs> He's just laid back, so kicked back, so peaceful, so calm. But he feels like a he feels like a big teddy bear. Like I just wanna hug him. He says big marshmallow. Don't forget the good times. Don't forget the laughs. Think of me in a good way. And he says that'll actually raise your vibration. If you don't think about any of the negative things that happen. I know I was an ass. And I apologize. So please accept my apology and forgive me because that will help cleanse you. That will help you let go of something in that relationship. I meant no harm. I have no anger now. Cheery, cheerio. Tell me he loves me. And he's, he's holding a balloon and he's dancing, twirling around like a ballerina while he's holding this balloon. Twirling around, twirling around. So I don't know if somebody's had a balloon release for him or somebody's taken a balloon to him or I don't know if he's acknowledging that he got a balloon somebody's birthday's coming. He's, oh, I see happy birthday. So I don't know if somebody's sent him a balloon for his birthday. He 
he's not being real clear about the balloon, but it does say he turned it around and it does say happy birthday. So hmm, he's being a little unclear. Usually they let me know like if it just happened or it's going to happen or if it's his or if it's yours, but he's not, he's not being clear about it. I can't make him. Okay. So with that, he's leaving. I know that he's he's very peaceful. He looks good, happy. Um, sorry this took so long. Everything's been with all this quarantine virus crap, and my house was like chaos for a couple weeks. So that kind of that kind of put my schedule way off. So much love to you, my dear. Thank you for being patient. Much love to Holly. You gotta love her. See you all later. Thank you very much, Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, oracle card advisor, paranormal investigator, voice for your loved ones. See you later.